Here's the setup for this fun AI experiment using the audio overviews feature on Notebook LM from Google, which is an AI tool to analyze and organize notes and documents. A few days ago, we had released a video on YouTube discussing the top 10 best free AI tools. So I decided to upload the transcript for that video to Notebook LM and generate an audio overview that sounds like a podcast with two AI hosts. What it created is amazing, even though it did quote me incorrectly in a couple places. What follows is the audio result of that using Notebook LM. I've added the necessary video excerpts where needed. So here we go. All right, so you know how hard it is to stay on top of things these days. Yeah, totally. It's like drinking from a fire hose, right? Exactly. Like, I just, I want to know what's important and what's going to make a difference for me, you know? But I can't spend all day reading articles and watching videos. I hear there's so much noise out there. So that's what we're doing here today. Uh, trying to cut through all that clutter. Yeah, giving you the need to know on the most useful stuff. Specifically, we're looking at free AI tools this time. The best of the best for 2025. Exactly. And to do that, uh, we're diving into a transcript from the Brett in Tech YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, he's got some good stuff. Yeah, their top 10 list. Actually, top 10 best free AI tools everyone should know in 2025. Nice. So what are we going to uncover here today? I think the real value here is going beyond just, you know, what each tool does. Right. Getting into how they actually work and... Like, what are the unexpected uses or benefits? Uh, maybe some surprising stuff, you know. A little AI deep dive. Exactly. Okay. So first up is this tool called Napkin AI. Napkin AI. And the big thing here is that it turns text into visuals which I thought was super interesting. Well, that's cool because visuals are so important these days. Right, like for social media or even just making like a long document more interesting. Absolutely. And Napkin AI seems to make that whole process way easier. Do you think so? Yeah, the source makes it sound pretty simple. Um, you create an account and then there's this button that says create my first napkin. Oh, cute. I know, right? And then you can either paste in some text or have the AI generate some for you. Oh, wow. So it's not just about making your existing content more visual. Right, it can help you create new content too, which I thought was pretty cool. That's handy if you're stuck, you know? Totally. Yeah. But here's where it gets really interesting. When you hover over your text, there's this lightning bolt icon. Okay, a lightning bolt. Yeah, and if you click on it, it instantly turns that text into an infographic. Oh, wow, that's fast. Right, imagine how much time that could save you. No kidding, infographics can take forever to make. Exactly, and the best part is, at least for now, while it's still in beta, Napkin AI is totally free. Nice, a free trial. Well, it's more like they're offering their entire professional plan for free during beta. Wow, that's generous. Yeah, so you can really test it out and see if you like it. So how do we get in on this? We'll have a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Perfect. Okay, next up we have Notebook LM from Google. Notebook LM, huh? Yeah, it's powered by their new Gemini 2.0 model. Oh, fancy. I know, right? It's basically an AI-powered research and writing assistant. Okay, so how does it work? So you upload all your notes, documents, anything text-based, really. Okay. And the AI analyzes it all and helps you make sense of it. So it's not just about writing new stuff, it's about understanding what you already have. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, and it's super flexible in terms of what you can upload. Uh, PDFs, audio and video files, website links, all kinds of stuff. Wow, that's pretty comprehensive. Yeah, they even said something about a whole lot more, so I'm not even sure what all it supports. Mm -hmm. So it's like a one-stop shop for all your research materials. Basically, wow. yeah. To get started, you create a new notebook and just drag and drop your files in. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, they gave an example of uploading a PDF tutorial on Python programming. Okay, so like if you're learning a new coding language. Exactly. You can just feed all your materials into Notebook LM. Interesting. And you can upload a ton of stuff too, up to like 50 different sources, I think they said. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, and here's the really cool part. You can then ask it questions about your uploaded stuff. Like a search engine, but for your own personal notes. Kind of, but it's more than that because it actually gives you citations showing you exactly where it found the information in your documents. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, and the citations are clickable, so you can jump right back to the original text. So you can double check the AI's work. Exactly. Nice. But wait, there's more. It also has this audio overview feature. Audio overview, what's that? It basically turns your analyzed content into a podcast with AI-generated hosts. Whoa, that's crazy. I know, right? And you can even customize what the AI hosts focus on. So it's like getting a personalized summary of all your research. Exactly. It's pretty mind-blowing. So is this another freebie? 
Uh, well, it is to start. They have a free version, and then there's a paid plus version that's part of Google One AI Premium. Okay, so you can try it out for free and see if you like it. Exactly. All right, cool. All right, moving on to another Google tool. This one's called Gemini Stream Real Time. Gemini Stream Real Time. Yeah, and this one's all about real time interaction with an AI agent. Oh, so you can actually talk to it. Yeah, using yeah. audio, video, and text, it's built into their AI studio platform. Interesting. So where do you find it? It's in the left pane right below the Create Prompt button. Okay. And the transcript emphasizes the importance of setting the output format to audio. Makes sense if you're interacting in real time. Yeah. And you can also change the voice if you want. Oh, cool. Personalize the experience. Exactly. What kind of stuff can you do with it? The example they gave was getting help with computer tasks. Like, say you're trying to figure out how to turn off notifications in Windows 11. Oh, yeah. That could be tricky sometimes. Right. So you can just ask Gemini Stream real time and it'll walk you through it. Handy. Yeah. And it has screen sharing capabilities, too. So you can actually show the AI what you're seeing. Oh, wow. That's really useful for troubleshooting. Exactly. All right. On to the next one, then. OK. So next up is Fathom which is a little different. Different how? It's an AI-powered note-taking tool specifically for online meetings. Oh, interesting, like for Zoom or Teams. Exactly. Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google, meet all the big ones. So it takes notes for you during meetings. Basically, which is amazing because you know how hard it is to pay attention and take notes at the same time. Yeah, totally. You always miss something. Right. But with Fathom, the AI is doing all the note taking in the background so you can just focus on the conversation. I like the sound of that. Yeah. And it works on both Windows and Mac OSes. It covers most people. <sighs> exactly. And it does a lot more than just take notes. It records the meeting, transcribes it, and even generates a summary afterwards. Wow. That's pretty comprehensive. Yeah. And it can translate the summaries into 28 different languages. Nice. That's super helpful for international teams. Totally. And you can easily share snippets of the meeting with colleagues, too. Oh, cool. So you can highlight the important parts. Exactly. And there's also an AI assistant feature that lets you query your notes from specific meetings or even across all your meetings. So you can basically search your entire meeting history. Exactly. Which is amazing if you're trying to remember a decision that was made or something like that. I can see that being super useful. Yeah. And while they do have paid plans with more features, the transcript says the free plan is enough for most people. Another free tool. Awesome. All right. So now for something a little bit different. Uh, this one's called Manus AI. Manus AI. Yeah. And the source material actually called this one out as potentially controversial. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, it was developed in China and just came out recently. But it's being touted as a huge game changer. OK. Well, I'm intrigued. The big claim is that it can autonomously handle really complex tasks like writing and deploying code without any human intervention. Whoa, hold on. Writing and deploying code all by itself. That's what they're saying, yeah. That's a pretty bold claim. I know, right? And apparently other AI models like ChatGPT are kind of nervous about it. So it's like next level AI. Basically, yeah. It's currently in private beta, so you have to join a wait list to get access. Oh, OK. So it's still pretty exclusive. Yeah. But there was a quote from a programmer who's used it, and they said it was mind blowing. Wow. So it must be pretty impressive. Yeah. The transcript doesn't go into specifics about the coding, but it does mention screenplay development as a use case on their website. Interesting. So maybe it's not just limited to technical stuff. Yeah. It sounds like it could have a lot of different applications. I'm definitely curious to learn more about this one. Me too. All right. So moving on to Harpa AI. Harpa AI. Yeah. This one's a browser extension for Chrome and other Chromium-based browsers. Okay. So something you install right in your browser. Exactly. And it's built on a combination of ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude AI. Wow. So it's packing a lot of AI power. Yeah. The source described it as having like a dozen AI tools in one. That's a lot of functionality. Right. It can do a ton of stuff like scan and summarize videos and websites. OK, that's useful. Yeah. And keep track of updates on web pages, help you write emails and articles, extract SEO keywords. It's like a Swiss army knife for the Internet. Exactly. And that's not all. It can also provide AI powered responses right alongside your Google search results and even monitor price drops on e-commerce sites. Wow, that's a lot to take in. I know, right? It's basically your AI companion for everything you do online. So if I'm understanding this correctly, you're telling me I need this extension. It's definitely worth checking out. For sure. OK, now let's talk about Gamma. Gamma? Yeah, this one's all about creating presentations, slide decks, documents, websites, anything where you want to make professional looking content. OK, so it's like a design tool. Kind of, but it's more than that. It uses AI to help you create the content itself. 
Interesting. Yeah, and it works best on Chrome or Chromium browsers. Gotcha. So you have a few different ways to start a new project. Uh, you can paste an existing text. You can generate content from a one-line prompt, or you can import files or URLs. Okay, so lots of flexibility. Exactly. The transcript focused on the generate option specifically for creating presentations. Well, you can just tell it what you want and it'll make a presentation for you. Basically, yeah, but there's a limit of 10 cards on the free plan. 10 cards, okay. The example they used was prompting it to create a presentation proposing a family vacation to Tokyo, Japan. Okay, sounds fun. Yeah, and it generates a full outline that you can then edit and you can choose how detailed you want it to be. Nice, so you have some control over the output. Yeah. And you can also choose between stock photos or AI-generated images for your slides, and you can pick a theme, too. Cool. So it's like a guided process. Mm. Exactly. And then once you're happy with everything, you hit Generate, and it creates the whole presentation for you, text and visuals. Wow. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Gamma uses a freemium model, so you get 400 AI credits and 20,000 AI token inputs per month for free. Okay. So enough to try it out. Exactly. And then if you need more, you can upgrade to a paid plan. Makes sense. All right. So the transcript also briefly mentions a few other AI tools worth knowing about. Okay. Lay it on me. So first, there's ChatGPT from OpenAI. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows ChatGPT. Right. It's a chatbot that can do a ton of different tasks from answering questions to summarizing text. Yep. Super versatile. Exactly. And it has both free and paid tiers. Okay. So good for any budget. Then there's Google Gemini which is their big competitor to chat GPT. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. It offers similar productivity features, and the source says it's actually gotten a lot better recently. Good to see some healthy competition. Exactly. What else? Okay, so then there's Apple Intelligence, which was apparently super hyped up. Apple's getting into the AI game. Yeah, yeah but the source was really not impressed. Oh, really? What did they say? They said it was a big letdown years behind its competitors and even suggested that the advertising was misleading. Ouch, that's harsh. Yeah. They even included a quote about how Steve Jobs would be rolling over in his grave if he saw it. Wow. Strong words. Yeah, not a great review. Okay, so maybe steer clear of that one for now. Probably a good idea. So what's the last one? Okay, so the last one is Hugging Face Spaces. Hugging face spaces. Yeah, it's kind of like an AI app directory or a playground for machine learning. Interesting. Yeah, you can create, host, and share interactive machine learning demos and applications on there. Sounds like a fun place to explore. It is, and they have a ton of free AI apps in all sorts of categories. Like, like They gave image editing as an example, but there's all kinds of stuff. So I can find AI tools for all sorts of different tasks. Exactly, and you can sort the apps by recently created so you can see what's new. So we covered a lot of ground today. We did. It's amazing how many free AI tools are out there now. It's like a whole new world of possibilities. Exactly. And they can really make a difference in so many areas of your life. From work to personal projects to just learning new things. Totally. And the best part is you don't have to spend a ton of money to access this technology. That's right. There's a free option for almost everything. And even the paid plans are usually pretty affordable. Yeah. It's great to see this technology becoming more accessible. So as we wrap up here, I want you to think about w which of these tools really stood out to you. Yeah, which ones got you excited? Exactly. Which ones could you see yourself using right away to maybe solve a problem or start a new project? Pick one or two and just dive in. Exactly. You might be surprised at what you can accomplish with these free AI tools. Have some fun with it. Absolutely. All right, that's it for our deep dive today. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye. Thanks for watching and listening. I've added the link to our video released earlier discussed by the AI hosts in the description. If you enjoyed this AI experiment video, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click that notification bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest AI videos and other tech related stuff here on Brett in Tech.